when I hear what we call music, it seems to me that someone is talking and talking about his feelings or about his ideas of relationships. But when I hear uh, traffic, the sound of traffic here on 6th Avenue, for instance, I don't have the feeling that anyone is talking. I have the feeling that uh, sound is acting. And I love the activity of sound. What it does is it gets uh, louder and quieter, and it gets higher and lower, and it gets longer and shorter. It does all those things which I've, I'm completely satisfied with that. I don't need sound to talk to me. We don't see much difference between time and space. We don't know where one begins and the other stops. <laughs> so that uh, most of the arts we think of as being in time, and most of the arts we think of as being in space. I, Marcel Duchamp, for instance, began thinking of uh, time, I mean thinking of music as being not a time art, but a space art. And he made it a piece called Sculpture Musicale, which means <clears throat> different sounds coming from different places and lasting, producing a sculpture which is sonorous and which remains. People expect listening to be more than listening. And so sometimes they speak of uh, inner listening um, or the meaning of sound. Uh, when I uh, talk about music, I gen it finally comes to people's minds that I'm talking about sound that doesn't mean anything. Uh, that is not inner, but is just outer. And they say, they, these people who understand that finally say, you mean it's just sounds, thinking that to, for something to just be a sound is that to be useless. Whereas I love sounds, just as they are. And I have no need for them to be anything more than what they are. I don't want them to be psychological. I don't want a sound to pretend that it's a bucket or that it's a president or that it's in love with another sound. <laughs> I just want it to be a sound. Uh, and I'm, I'm not so stupid either. There was a, a German philosopher who's very well known, Immanuel Kant. And he said there are two things that um, don't have to mean anything. One is music and the other is laughter. <laughs> don't have to mean anything that is in order to give us very deep pleasure. Oh, you know that, don't you? The sound experience, which I prefer to all others, <clears throat> is the experience of silence. And the silence, almost everywhere in the world now, is, is uh, traffic. If you listen to Beethoven or to Mozart, you see that they're always the same. But if you listen to traffic, you see it's always different. Daylight, dawning and daylight, our hearts will be throbbing guitars. Morning may come without warning and take away the stars. If we must live for that moment, love till that moment is true. After the night and the music die, will I have you? Écoutez Wagner sans savoir l'histoire. 
Et j'imaginais beaucoup d'histoires. En fait, j'étais très surpris de, de connaître la vraie histoire après. Ça veut dire que dans la vie, c'est un, un peu ce qui arrive aussi souvent. C'est-à-dire que j'aime bien me laisser surprendre par ce que je croyais être des, des paroles qui voulaient dire quelque chose dans un amas, dans un flot de choses qui est un peu compréhensible, par exemple parce qu'il y a la circulation, ou parce que des gens parlent des langues un peu, ou des accents un peu bizarres, ce qui fait que on ne sait pas vraiment qu'est-ce qui est signifiant et qu'est-ce qui n'est pas, et c'est l'association d'idées qui se font dans la tête à partir d'une écoute qui prend tout, quoi, qui prend... Regarde, c'est dur que tu as fait. Dans une salle, en principe dans un bon fauteuil, regarder un orchestre et euh, écouter. Cette écoute, elle est certes active, mais néanmoins de par la position même du corps euh, de l'auditeur, elle a un côté passif. Beaucoup d'œuvres dans la musique contemporaine proposent aujourd'hui une écoute tout à fait active. D'abord parce que certaines œuvres réclament, je dirais, un déplacement de l'auditeur. C'est tout à fait important. Sans cela, l'œuvre n'existe pas. Elle fait, cette déambulation fait partie du processus compositionnel. Mais même si l'auditeur reste assis, il y a des œuvres qui demandent une écoute beaucoup plus active que dans la musique euh, classique et romantique, c'est lorsque, par exemple, le compositeur a développé une stratégie d'enveloppement par les sons des auditeurs. Soit qu'il s'agisse d'une musique électroacoustique, soit...